And we are back on Sportsman Radio. I'm your host, Chris Shanfell, and I am now joined by Arizona Cardinals wide receiver, LaRon Bird. Thanks for joining the show tonight, LaRon. How's it going? Man, it's going good, man. Thank you for having me. Hey, my pleasure. Now, I want to start this interview off by talking a little bit about your high school days. I see you attended uh, Hansville High School in Louisiana where you would play wide receiver and safety during your senior year, and uh, you put up 50 receptions, over 600 yards, and 13 touchdowns. Now, that's football. Yeah. You're also a standout uh, basketball player. You averaged over 20 points per game during, during your junior year. Why did you decide to choose uh, football over basketball? Well, it's kind of a crazy story, man. Um, I was a basketball player all my life, and um, up to my 10th grade year in high school, um, one of the football coaches had seen me in the gym. He was like, I should just come try out for football. So I went out there for spring practice one day, you know. It was just one of those days. It was catching everything, you know, running past people. And so coach put me on defense. My first position was safety. I played safety at first. And um, like midway through the season of my sophomore year, one of our star receivers, um, Brian Singleton, got hurt. And then when coach put me in, and I had scored a game with a touchdown. And ever since then, they just kept me a receiver. But, um, man, I know it's just a different feeling. You know what I mean? Playing in front of 80,000 and playing in front of 14,000 is totally different, you know? So that's why I chose football over basketball. Would you say it was a hard decision to make? Oh, um, yeah, it was. It was because just, just getting adapted to it. You know, like all my life I played basketball. And, you know, you get kind of spoiled. You know, you're in air condition at all times, you know. You don't have to put another 10 pounds of gear on, but. At the end of the day, man, football just, it's just a thrill. That excitement you get when you score, when you catch a pass, or that kind of momentum, the momentum shift from a defensive stop or offensive play, you know, it just, I mean, it just piqued my interest, man. I just fell in love with it. You know, I thank God for giving me the opportunity to get a scholarship to the University of Miami, and, you know, great things have been happening ever since. And speaking of the University of Miami, you decided to attend that school. Uh, being from Louisiana, being one of the top players in the state, why did you decide to go to the U? I went to the U because LSU was recruiting me as a safety. Um, if LSU had, had been recruiting me as a receiver, I probably would have been an LSU Tiger. But they um, was recruiting me as a safety. And um, Miami recruited me as a receiver, and I wanted to play receiver, you know, throughout my career. And um, the night before signing, the LSU called and, and wanted me to play safety, but, you know, my mind was already made up at the University of Miami. And you actually went on to play in all 13 games and started three of them during your freshman year. Before committing to Miami, did you know that you would be able to get some uh, playing time during your first year there, or did you have to show up, work hard, and impress coaches? Oh, no, not at all. Man, I was an underdog. You know, going to college, I was an underdog. Uh, a lot of people knew me from basketball. You know, it was like I'm a basketball player. But um, I was an underdog going in and had a lot of high-profile guys my freshman year getting to college. You know, um, all I, I've been a, been a habit work on my whole life, you know, just hard work and getting where I fit in. And, you know, I went in there with the, with the mind frame of, I don't care who's in. You know, it can be five stars, four stars, three stars, no matter what. I'm here to stay, you know. And, you know, I worked hard, showed the coaches what I had, and, you know, just happened the third game of my freshman year, I became a starter, you know. So, um, good things happen to those that work hard, man, you know. And I just, like I said, I thank God for every opportunity he has given me up to this point. And everything he has planned in my future, you know. But, I'm mm -hmm. um, not. Definitely doesn't have the intention on, you know, going to that starting right off the back. All I just know that I told Coach I was come here to give you 110%. And, and Leron, tell us about that first college football touchdown you had, which was against Duke. Yeah, uh, my first touchdown was against Duke. Um, we was up, it was in the fourth quarter, and um, so Coach was like, I'm going to try to get you in the end zone today. So he threw a fade route to me. It was about like a 12-yard fade route. And what happened was I jumped up. I uh, missed time my jump. So I tipped the ball up. And, and, and I was almost a drop. And as the ball was going to the ground, I scooped it up with one hand and caught it. And uh, so they, they, they reviewed it and everything, but the rule was a touchdown. And Coach was like, I tried to give you a bone on your first touchdown, and you almost blew it. You know, you gave me a hard time about it. But, yeah, man, I was like, you know, it was amazing. It was an amazing feeling. During your four years in college, you recorded over 100 receptions, over 1,200 yards. Laron, how was your experience at the University of Miami? Okay. How was your experience overall at the University of Miami? Oh, man, it was great. Uh, I wouldn't trade for anything in the world, man. Like I said, the University of Miami taught me so much. Um, definitely taught me about competing, you know, because you have guys every day at Miami, you know, just competing with one another, making each other better, pushing each other. And it also motivated you also, you know. In the summertime, you see guys like Ed Reed, Reggie Wayne, Andre Johnson coming back and working out. And you're like, well, man, these guys were just at the University of Miami themselves, you know, and to see the level of success that they, that they have, 
you want what you want that, you know? So you be so close to it, to when it makes you just, just strive that much harder to get it, you know? But, uh, man, it was great. It was great. On and off the field, man. I, like I said, it was a, off the field, it was a vacation for four years, and on the field, was working for four years. So I had the best of both worlds. Now, the University of Miami, they've produced some very big stars. You know, Ray Lewis, you mentioned Ed Reed, Andre Johnson. Do you have a favorite Miami Hurricane of all time? Uh, my favorite Miami Hurricane would be Ed Reed. Hmm. All right. Yeah, all right. man. Ed, it definitely has to be Ed Reed, man. Well, what do you think about him going to the Texans this season? Hey, man, you know, it's a business. Mm -hmm. One thing that you must know in, in, this, in, this, in this game, well, definitely, man, so it's a business, you know? I mean... I'm sure I wanted to see him retire Raven. I'm sure everybody else wanted to see him retire Raven. But, you know, it's a business. And um, basically, he got the best of both worlds at the end of the day. You know, um, he had the opportunity to win the, win the, I mean, win the um, Super Bowl with the Ravens. And, um, you know, I, I think both sides part of it was good business. You know, it wasn't a bad taste in anyone's mouth. Right, right. Now, now, Laurent, here's something that stuck out to me. In 2011, you won the Hurricane uh, Media Good Guy Award. Uh, I take it you won uh -huh. that. Uh, you won that award by interacting with the media. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Yes, sir. And what does that? What does that uh, award mean to you? I mean, it means a lot. It means a lot, man. It shows your character. You know, it, it definitely shows your character, man. Because, like, sometimes, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a professional football player, and like a lot of guys, you know, have a bad game. You know, when you need it, you got to do your job. You know, media guys got to do their job. Sometimes they ask tough questions, sometimes they ask easy questions. But that should be composed of an answer just like you would if you had a big game or if you had a bad game, you know. So yeah. I think that definitely shows your character, man. You know, it definitely shows your character being able to be the same guy every day, you know. You guys are listening to Sportsman Radio. I'm your host, Chris Shanfeld, talking with Arizona Cardinals wide receiver Laron Bird. Laron, you entered the 2012 NFL Draft, but went undrafted. Were you expecting to hear your name called at some point during that draft? Well, um, yeah, like I'm sure everybody has, but um, I came off a bad season my my um, senior year in college. You know, I had a bad season, so it really wasn't a surprise. You know, I just like I said, I just no matter if I went number one pick or the last pick overall, I just wanted an opportunity. You know, that's my main thing. I just wanted an opportunity to show what I had. You know, I, I knew that I had a talent. I knew I had the ability to make it. And the NFL is all about winning, man. You know, so, um, like I said, man, but it's all God, man. You know, God plays everybody's footsteps. God has all plans in everybody's lives. So, you know, I'm just happy things are going the way they are. And what was it like to receive a phone call from the Arizona Cardinals and then sign an NFL contract? I, I got to think that that was like a dream come true for you. Oh, man, like I said, man, you know, it's a tear of joy. You know, it's yeah. definitely a tear of joy, man, talking to Coach Wiz on the phone and letting him know that he, well, let him, him know that I was wanting to be a part of this team and him telling me that I have opportunity, you know, to become a player for the Arizona Cardinals, man, was just a dream come true, you know, and then definitely, like, just completing my first year in the NFL, it's like, man, you know, who would ever thought, you know? Who would ever thought? So, I mean, like I said, that was a great moment for me in my career, but I'm sure there'll be many more, you know? Oh yeah. oh, yeah, many more. And, you, of course, you entered a very talented group of guys. And I got to mention the top receiver of the team, Larry Fitzgerald, who is a great player, seems uh -huh. like a great person. What are some things yeah. you learned from the Pro Bowl wide receiver, Larry Fitzgerald? Oh, man, I learned a lot from him. Um, I learned a lot from him, man. It's kind of like he's my big brother almost, you know, um, for business-wise. Um, for his own skill, man, just being, being a of the game. That's one of the main things that I learned from him. He's a student of the game, you know. He studies so hard, man. He practices hard. He is all about detail. And that's the thing that he, he has taught me. You know, he basically told me, man, you if you could be a student of the game, you could play forever in this league, you know. And, I mean, obviously it's proving. You know, Larry been in the league since 2004. He's still playing at a high level, you know. And it just goes to show you the hard work and the dedication that he puts into this game. Now, last season, you guys got off to a hot start uh, going 4-0, but then uh, the season went on, and it, it just got tougher. You guys ended the season 5-11. and uh, I think you guys had uh, four starting quarterbacks at some point, and just during the offseason, you guys acquired quarterback Carson Palmer. It looks like he's going to be the starter. As a wide receiver, it's, uh, you know, it's... It, I gotta ask you. It, it's it seems like it's been pretty tough for uh, the Arizona Cardinals lately with their quarterbacks that they've had. How do you feel about uh, Carson Palmer being your new quarterback? I mean, it's a great feeling. You know, he's a veteran. He's a vet. Um, you know, uh, he's a great one of the, one of the great quarterbacks in the NFL as of today. You know, um, but at the end of the day, he wants to throw the ball. He's just out to make a play. You know, so um, can't really just dwell on that. We can't really 
bring that for the miscues that happened last year. We just got to do our job from a receiver standpoint and everything else that happened. Coach Ken Wisenhunt was also let go last season, and uh, the Cardinals hired uh, Bruce Arians as the next head coach. And I'm very excited to see what Ar uh, Arians can do there in Arizona. What do you think about your new head coach? Hello? Hey, Leron, you there? Yeah, yeah you're going in and out, my man. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, Coach Wisenhunt, he, he obviously he was let go after last season, and the Cardinals hired Bruce Arians as the next head coach. Uh, obviously, I'm very excited to see what a uh, Arians could do in Arizona. I'm uh, a pretty big Cardinals fan. Uh, I, I got to say I'm a Chicago Bears fan before a Cardinals fan. Sorry, Leron. But uh, I am very excited to see what Arians could do there in Arizona. Obviously, he was the coach of the year last year. What do you think about your new head coach? Oh, man, I, I love him, man. I love him. He's a straightforward guy. He's going to let you know, you know, what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right. You know, he's going to always coach you up no matter who you are. You know, no matter if you're the top of the food chain or the bottom of the food chain, he's always going to coach you up. And me personally, being a young guy, I'm definitely excited because, you know, you've seen the thing that he did with Indianapolis last year. He knows the young talent that he had. You know, he reached the playoffs and did great things over there. So, I mean, I couldn't be more excited as a young player entering that second year. Chris Shanfell here talking with Cardinals wide receiver Laron Bird. Laron, you guys had a very successful draft as you guys selected guard uh, Jonathan Cooper, linebackers Kevin Minter, Alex Okafor, wide receiver Ryan Swope. But one of my favorite picks in the entire 2013 NFL draft was your guys' third round draft pick, the Honey Badger, Tyran Matthew. Uh, I think he could be a player that we'll look back and say he was a steal and should have gone in the first or second round. I honestly, I, I really do honestly believe that. Now, his personal problems got a little little out of control, and the Arizona Cardinals were able to draft him in the third round. How do you feel about Tyran Matthew being a part of the team? Uh, for one, he's from Louisiana. So I got uh, around with him. He's home team. <laughs> he's home team, you know? <laughs> but, oh, man, you know, he speaks for himself. His resume speaks for himself. He's a playmaker, you know, and that's what you want. On defense, you want a playmaker. And that's what he is. You know, I say he's definitely going to have a great opportunity, man, to do what he, to do, what he do. And, and I, I think for his personal problems, you know, that's, 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 out, that's out and about now. You know, he was in college, he made a mistake, yeah, you know, but you now he's on a different level. He knows what's at stake. You know, this is his life. This is his job now. So I think all the other stuff is out the window, and I mean, I think you can respect great things from him. And he's really in the perfect situation. I mean, his mentor uh, and great friend Patrick Peterson is there in Arizona as well. Of course. Of course. Of course. You know what I'm saying? You see the type of player that that is. You know, I already made two Pro Bowls within his first two years in the, in the NFL. And I guess you have a guy like Tyron with his, with his playmaking ability coming in and joining a fellow Tiger, you know. So, I mean, that will be a deadly combination. Like I say, he just learned the game. And, and he should be that right-hand man, you know. He's just he's here figuring out everything that, you know, everything that Pat sees, how Pat reads defenses. And just, and just try to be that same player. What can we expect out of the Arizona Cardinals wide receiver Laron Bird during the 2013-2014 NFL season? Man, just, just, expect, just expect me to just be reliable. Reliable, be there making big plays when my name is called, and, and, and just doing my job. Just doing my job, being accountable. That's the main thing that you can see, just me being accountable. Whenever my time is given, whenever my opportunity is given, you can just rely on me to make the play. Well, Ron, I really appreciate your time, man. Before I let you go, I have just a few quick, fun, personal questions just to get to know you a bit, and then I'll let you go. Does that sound good? Okay. Okay, it's all good. All right, Laurent, what's your favorite TV show and movie? My favorite TV show is Martin. <laughs> My favorite movie is Think Like a Man. Favorite thing to eat? My favorite thing to eat is seafood. I'm from Louisiana. <laughs> all right, all right. I guess that wasn't a, a, a no brainer. Favorite thing to do in your free time? I'm sleep. Uh, <laughs> sleep. You know, I, I have a nine month old daughter, man. She, she's always she's always turned up, you know, so I'm sleep. Well, hey, man, congrats on that. I appreciate it, my man. Hey, except for football, what is your favorite sport? Basketball? Basketball. Yeah, definitely basketball. Hey, man, I was just talking to uh, rookie cornerback Ronnie Yell yesterday. He said the same thing. Next time you guys come out to Chicago, i got to get you guys in a one-on-one. -on -one. All right, we'll see about that. I, you know, I, I was kind of nice with it, so we'll have to see about that. <laughs> You're on Twitter at L underscore Bird. Uh, obviously, if it wasn't for Twitter and social media, you, you, we wouldn't be able to do this interview right now, so I really appreciate that. Why do you make it important con to connect with your fans? Fans and 
important because everybody is people. You know, you treat everybody, you want to be treated like it says. It's social media. You know, that's what it's for. That is definitely what it's for. But it's definitely important because, you know, I want I want my fans to know, I want people in general just to know that no matter what level of success you have reached, you should always be able to communicate with anybody. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter if you have uh, 2 million followers or uh, 100 followers. You know, it doesn't matter. You should be able to connect with anybody. If you're to be, a, if you're able to meet any famous person, who would that be and why? Uh, Nicki Minaj, but don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> nice, nice. My own personal reasons. My own personal reasons. My own personal hey, reasons. hey, hey! I understand, man. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few more questions for you, Leron, and I'll let you go. Uh, what did you? Okay. What was the first thing you bought with that first NFL uh, contract? Uh, the first NFL paycheck you received. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, with some furniture, man. From uh, for the first thing I did, but the first big thing that I did was um, I got a car from my mom. All right, all right, that that's cool, that's cool. And last but not least, what is something about Arizona Cardinals wide receiver Laron Bird that many people do not know about? Um, well, that's the reason why they don't know because I ain't told nobody, you know. But oh <laughs> uh, man, I'm a little bit of OCD, man. I'm 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 uh, OCD, man. I have Everything got to be double tapped. Everything got to be organized. Man, I'm a bit of a neat freak, you know. So that's something that probably nobody knows that's, that's outside of the team. Hey, man, being a neat freak isn't always bad. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, I mean, um, you know, you're right about that. Hey. There's a lot of people over, I tell you that. Mm-hmm. Lorana, I gotta say, it's been a true pleasure to have you on the show. It's been a true pleasure to be uh, to speak to you. I, I gotta say, this is probably one of my favorite interviews. You really are a, uh, you really do seem like a great guy. I'm wishing you nothing but the best this year and uh, down the road. Before I let you go, is there anything you'd like to plug on the air for myself and our listeners? Oh uh, no, man, dude, like I said, man, just continue supporting your show, man. I wish everybody continue supporting your show, man. Watch out for the Cardinals this year. Hey, sounds good, Bird Gang, and take care.